Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers. Crimson Oracle here, and once again, coming at you with another of my Battlefield on a Budget projects. Uh, this time, it's going to be some barricades that I made from various bits of junk that I've been collecting, uh, diverting from the recycling, if you will. Uh, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Uh, it's a quick project. I think it probably took me about an hour and 15 minutes overall with all of the, you know, work uh spreading out the putty and uh doing the texture paste and all that stuff on it um so not too bad of a, a thing and you could definitely batch out more of them uh without too great of an expenditure of time so uh this is definitely a good way to get yourself some nice barricades that you can use to uh enhance the amount of cover uh, in your necromunda games so uh, this is a good one to have, uh, ground level kind of scatter terrain type stuff. So I was happy to knock that out. In other news, uh, I am getting close to, uh, I'm closing in on some, some fun milestones in terms of, uh, you know, getting subscribers and stuff. So, uh, I'm actually going to do a repaint on this, uh, Sister of Battle McFarlane toy that I got at Target the other day, uh, I just happened to be there and picked it up and decided why not It'd be a good challenge. So when I get to 600 subscribers, which is not too long from now, I think, uh, I'm going to do a repaint on her to do uh, a new color scheme and I'll leave that up to a vote. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll get to, you know, have feedback from folks about what their thoughts are on that. So I look forward to, uh, having the community help decide what uh, direction to go in for the repaint. Um, and uh, in other news, I am working on kind of a, a fun background project. Uh, I'm actually going to start doing some film review kind of stuff uh, where I talk about uh, genre films that kind of fit in the milieu of uh, Necromunda and Warhammer 40K. But more info on that later this week. So uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, check me out on Patreon. I just added a $2, uh, two US dollar Patreon tier. Um, so if anyone's interested in helping me uh, keep these videos coming, of course, uh, check that out. And with that, let's get cracking on making some recycled trash terrain uh, barricades. As with previous projects in this series, we are starting with some flat bases made from cardboard glued together. In this case, rather than stacking the cardboard three high and then cutting a bevel, I kept it to two high and I just pre-cut uh, both the shapes with scissors and then we'll use the putty to sort of fill in that gap. Now, as you can see, I am using mostly bits of cardboard, of toothpick or dowel or whatever you want to call it. And of course, uh, little scraps of the, the card from the uh, cereal box and uh, little bits of uh, tongue depressor or popsicle stick or what have you. And of course, a bunch of uh, corrugated paper. Now here, that's a spool uh, from a sewing machine. So that's a fun one to incorporate because it gives you that nice round shape. And of course, I come in and do all these little details because I like to add that little greebling. It makes a big difference uh, when you go ahead and add the, the texture paste over the top. Everything just kind of gels together. Uh, you see, uh, I don't even know what that tube is, but <laughs> it came from something. So <laughs> I, I collected it out of the recycling. And then uh, you see the push pop lid once again. Those things are nifty. My kids got a bunch of push pops. And I just stole all the lids once they were done eating them. I like to use a variety of thicknesses of material. I like to drape the uh, corrugated stuff across the surfaces to kind of gel them together. 
And uh, for these, I also for those. Uh, oh, they're oh they're yarn spools, of course. Um, or not yarn, but string. <laughs> uh, they're just different size of one. And so for those, I trim the bottom so that they sit flush. Uh, that way, there is a bigger contact point for the glue. And it sort of just proceeds from there. And now we're going to come in and fill in the base. I like to do this step after applying the stuff on top because I'm going to use the wood filler to kind of form a secondary bond um, across the material. So the wood filler just kind of fills in the gaps and makes sure that the super glue doesn't get tugged on too much um, with just another layer of adhesive over top, nice heavyweight one. And as you can see, uh, the bevel comes from the, the gap filling between the two. I think it works really well. In these situations, I find that for a bigger piece, uh, you know, it's definitely better to go three thick with the cardboard. You can get away with less with plastic card, but I didn't have any plastic card on me, so I'm just doing everything with cardboard. And uh, the wood filler can also be used to kind of glop into the gaps of the insides of the cardboard, which is something that isn't always necessarily the most attractive component of these improvised builds. So I think that if they, you know, that can really help to kind of give it a, a feel to look a little bit more like a piece of a wall or something that has been repurposed than, you know, just whatever it actually <laughs> looks like. Now we come in with the putty once everything is dried. Uh, we, not putty, but the uh, <laughs> wood, no, not wood filler. <laughs> the texture paste that I make uh, using a mix of PVA, various weights and grits of sand and flock. Uh, we are going around and doing every single bit of this uh, with a light coating of this textured material. That will make these bits look like they are part of the, you know, the sort of <laughs> background of, uh, you know, the, this desolate wasteland. Um, I think that they work really well when you do them this way. And once again, we are going to be hitting these with craft paint, a brown craft paint from Deco Art, dark chocolate colored. And we're coming in with a large brush just to get the metallic parts all sort of undercoated in this brown, which we'll build off of later. But make sure to try to minimize the amount getting on the base.
I'm going to come in with a Craft Smart Ivory, blend it a little bit with the brown that was left over on the palette. This gives us a nice contrast between the sort of lighter color of the ash itself and the darker color of the weathering on the metal. And now some folk art deco, oh no, folk art Pueblo color. Stippled on with the brush, the outside edges. And now we come in with sponge to add black to the edges of the models. And then we go over top with the silver. Once again with the sponge. I find this works really well. Boom. Now, of course, come in with my patented system of washes. Well, really just one wash, the black wash. And so we come back in with the desert sand texture or uh, weathering pigment from Vallejo and cake that on nice. And I'm going to apply a little bit of matte varnish to these uh, items, which will give them a little bit of a flatter appearance. And there you have it, quick and easy barricades. You could make them pretty much any size you want, and they will work for you. So check those out. And of course, thank you to my patrons. And of course, uh, thanks to anyone who's interested in supporting my Patreon. You can find a link in the description at the bottom of the page, and that will take you um, to my Patreon. And don't forget to check out the podcast. And of course, everyone stay safe. And don't forget to change your paint water.